it's, it's crazy, Sandra. It is crazy. Nine out of the 10 coaches in the NWSL left their coaching position this season. Five of them males in coaching positions that were let go for cause. Yeah. And I think that's the more, I think that's the more 50%. important. I think that's a more important stat, honestly. And I'm glad that you're yeah. highlighting it again because we look through that, right? We say that it's like, oh, nine out of 10 NWSL coaches have left their coaching positions this year, but not all of those scenarios are the same or look the same or were for the same reasons, right? Some of these are coaches who, you know, went on to pursue other opportunities mm -hmm. on their own. Freya Coombe leaving midseason from Gotham to Angel City, you know, making an adjacent move within the league, right? Mark Mark Parsons of the Thorns uh, in the beginning of the season talking about, yes, I will be moving on. Uh, after this season, I want to complete things with, with the Thorns and then move on to a national team position with the Netherlands women's soccer team. Uh, and then within this, there are other uh, coaches who have similar scenarios. We we all just feel like we're starting to uh, reflect more deeply on what just happened back in September uh, with Paul Riley, uh, the former head coach of North Carolina Courage. Um, there has been, uh, you know, there has been, you know, discourse around uh, racing Louisville and the termination of Christy Holly and uh, the fact that he too was also. Uh, terminated uh, uh, from the club for cause, you know? And that's the other angle of that too, is that when people are talking about and saying things like protect the players, you have to mean that in every facet. You have to mean that in every single way. So if there's a moment, for example, since I'm talking about Louisville right now, if there's a moment where that comes out and it's because it's for cause and that's what it is, if there's an angle there where the victims do not want things to be publicized, that has to be, that has to be respected. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say protect the players and in the same breath, like want to scream about, you know, it's like, uh, you know, why don't we know? Well, maybe because the victims, the the victims want to be protected, you know? So there's all of these things that come into play. Um, and then we're also sort of seeing something like, you know, Hugh Williams of Kansas City current being moved to a front office technical staff uh, position and even something like that being met with suspicion. That is very sadly the current state of the league right now, mm -hmm. that they're very even they're very hardcore built in base, not even taking into consideration the fan base that they are trying to grow the casual fan that likes soccer and wants to watch soccer, but that their most rabid fan base are constantly meeting them with suspicion and frustration that there is no trust there. There's absolute, uh, there's absolute broken, broken trust between the league and it's most, at the time, dedicated fan base. And I feel like there is still that level of love and care and push and want to support the league. But I feel like that is there only if the league continues to make changes, which, again, you have to you have to take it. Uh, you have to take perhaps in this moment the lead of of the players themselves, which is why when you see a statement coming out from the players association, it's important to know what they say within that statement. Nothing short of a complete transformation of our league will suffice. And so we've been hearing these players come out and release their statements. We're, we're still seeing reaction from it. And like any news cycle, I'm sure Lisa, we're still going to continue to see players, former, past, present, future, react to these types of things. Um, because when something like this happens, it doesn't just sort of, you know, just sort of stay and just sort of wash away. There, there are people who are human, who, you know, have brains and hearts and minds and thoughts and feelings who are going to react to that. And I think you and I, even here together, are doing a little bit of that ourselves <laughs> with each other. It's, it's, been, it's been a lot. It's been a lot this whole year. And it still is a lot today. It, it is a lot. Um, and 
it's a lot to go through and to kind of unpack. But again, commend the bravery of players that have spoken up and come forward about this and, and all those that have experienced it and are still fearful and remain anonymous. Um, power to you as well for, for living through these horrible circumstances. Um, I, changes to come, Sandra. I have to be hopeful that with with the league that has already made changes um, with their commissioner and and changes that they say they're going to do investigations and, and hope to be more transparent. I have hope for the future that if not for the league making these changes, that the players will demand these changes um, and they will be made. I'm with you as well. I think they're the ones leading the way. And that's ultimately why I have the same amount of hope.